Welcome back to the channel and in today's exciting Blender tutorial I'm going to be showing you step by step how to make a ruffled skirt in Blender. Now this is a very beginner friendly tutorial. The only thing you need is your own sort of base mesh or character, whatever you want to do it on. But we're going to start by just lining up these bits of cloth. It's very, very simple modeling. And then I'm going to show you the exact settings, the exact methodology to get this really nice sort of ruffled skirt simulation. So yeah, this is a fantastic beginner friendly one. I hope you guys enjoy. If you do subscribe because I make a lot of stuff like this, you can also like the video. And for those of you who are supporting the channel on Patreon, you'll also be getting this finished blend file. But if you're not on Patreon, you can still follow along and make this final result with Blender, which is a completely free software. So I think that is enough of the introduction. Let's jump in and make this skirt in Blender. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I've gone ahead and in like two minutes, I just modeled this really basic sort of like body with legs. It's not hundred percent accurate, but the point here is just to demonstrate the actual ruffled skirt, not modeling a character or anything like that. So go ahead, get your own base mesh, your own model, whatever you want to work on. But the idea is to have it set up in the center of your scene like this in Blender. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go shift a, and you're going to go over to your mesh options and you'll add in a circle. Once you have that circle added in, it should be kind of around the bottom part of your um, character that you're adding the skirt to. So kind of just above the hips. And you simply want to tab into edit mode. And in my case, I have proportional editing enabled up here. So I'm just going to grab the front vertex and I'm just going to go the very front one. It's important. I'm going to go G, Y and just kind of move it back just to kind of round it out towards the front. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here towards the back, like so. Okay. And then in the top view, I'll just select half of these verts. I'm going to go X and delete them. So we only have half over here and I'll go add a modifier and I'll just make that a mirror modifier under the modifiers. Make sure clipping is enabled. It should be by X on default. And then in your top graphic view, using proportional editing, you could very easily kind of just shape this roughly to the kind of like form of your body in this case. Okay. So you kind of get the idea. That's kind of like where it's going to be starting at the top. I think that's should be quite obvious to anybody. Okay. So once you have that done, you can press A to select everything. You can turn off proportional editing and then go into your front orthographic view and then go E to extrude and extrude it down like so. And I'm going to go to about just the top of the knees. And then I'm going to go A to select everything. I'm going to go G, X, maybe just move it out just a little bit. And I might grab one of these bottom verts and just kind of like with proportional editing, kind of have it coming off to the side. So we're just enclosing it like so. And then in our right orthographic view, we can just grab all of these verts. We can go S, Y and just kind of scale them on a the Y just to give them a little bit of width like this. So this is kind of what we're going for. Okay, very, very simple so far. Nothing too complicated. And then we're going to turn off proportional editing. And in this case, um, I'm just going to go control R, double click just to add in an extra loop here um, or edge just because it's stretched a little bit. And I might just do the thing, same thing at the back, control R, double click. You may not have to do that, but we just want the spacing to be more or less even between these. And then we're going to go control R, hovering in the middle here. And you're going to roll your middle mouse button and you're going to add in a bunch of segments. So let's just go with something like this. So it all looks like rough little squares. We're going to double click. And you can see what I mean here by squares. We kind of just want roughly even squares. There we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to press A to select everything and we're going to right click and go subdivide. Now, depending on your computer, how powerful it is, you might just want to stick with this and not go with the subdivision. But for me, I'm going to right click and go subdivide like I did just to have some more topology. And then what I'm going to do is I'm now going to tab back out. I'm going to go to my mirror modifier. I'm just going to apply it in the object mode. I'm going to right click and go shade smooth. And then I'm going to tab back in. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go about here. So let's just kind of like, I'm going to just get my annotation tool just to demonstrate. We want to kind of just split this about here into three segments with our rings here. So what are we going to do? And I'll quickly just erase this, but you kind of get the idea. We're going to grab a row right about here, three quarters of the way up. 
And then we're going to go E to extrude and S to scale. And then click just a little bit so we have a row of squares going around. And then E to extrude and S to scale. And let's go out about this much and click. And then we're going to go Control R and we're going to roll the middle mouse button here just to add in enough segments so we see these rough squares. Now it's going to be a little bit stretched on the outside. And that's okay for now, as long as it's not too stretched. But what we're going to do, we're going to go over to our face select option. We're going to go shift, alt, and left click to loop select this row of faces that you can see here. Okay, the ones that are touching against this inner tube. And then we're going to go X, and we're going to go to the only faces section. So we still want the edges to be active. You can see these edges are still not active, but I mean, in the scene. We still want them to be here and not deleted. Only the faces need to be deleted. And then we're going to go back to our face select option, shift alt, left click to loop select this face here, go control plus to grow the selection, all the way till you get to the inside here, just so it stops at these edges. And now we're just going to simply go shift D to duplicate and Z, and let's bring it down to about here, just lining it up with one of those edge rows and click, and shift D to duplicate and then Z to move it down. And let's place this one about here, even spacing, okay? Just close to one of those edges. Now, what you can do, and in fact, we'll start with the top one here. Let's just select any face. Let's go Control L to select the whole thing. Let's just go S, Y, and scale it on the Y just a little bit. There we go, as it's widening out. Then let's go to our Edge Select option, deselect everything, Shift, Alt, and then left click to loop select this edge over here, and then Shift, Alt, left click to loop select one of the inside edges. Now these should have the same amount of verts, so if we go Control E or Command E, we can go Bridge Edge, loop, edge Loops. And then we can go X and delete only the faces. And then let's come to the bottom ring here, just select any edge, Control L to select the whole thing, and then let's go S, Y. Scale it a little bit on the Y just to make up for that tapering that's happening here on the dress. And let's just go S, X and maybe give it a little bit more of X dimension just so it's wrapping around. And we're gonna do the same thing. Shift, Alt, left click on this inner edge and then a loop in the inside tube to match and then go Control E, bridge that edge loop and then with it all active, go X and only faces, like so. And that's really good. But what we need to do as well is we need to make sure to, first of all, save as we're working. But let's go to our vertex select option. Let's go Shift, Alt, left click to loop select the top row of verts. And let's go Control plus to grow to selection. Let's go over to our so object data properties. Let's just come here to the vertex groups and go plus and let's assign, let's just call this shrink. Okay, and let's go plus to create another group. And over here, we're gonna go Control minus just to shrink the selection to only the top row. And with this new group, we're gonna assign it to that group. Double click and let's just call that pin. So we've got the shrink, which is this one here. And we got the pin, which is um, just these guys here. Okay, so let's tab back out. And um, if you're getting sort of this weird normals thing, just tab back in, go A to select everything, go Alt N, and just recalculate the outside normals and tab back out. And that should fix that weird shading. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to our modifiers, add modifier, search, and let's just type in shrink and give it a shrink wrap. Let's just come to the vertex group and select that shrink. And then let's come to the target and then select your base mesh. In this case, it's just the one I created. I'm going to select. There we go. And then we're going to go to our physics. We're going to give it a cloth. We're going to go down all the way to our shape. We're going to give it a pin group and we're going to select the pin. We're going to enable sewing and we're going to give it a sewing max for strength here or let's just see what it says, a sewing force of 12. And let's just go over shrink factor of minus 0.2. That's gonna allow it to kind of frizzle up a little bit. Make sure to save. And then you also need to make sure the skirt can interact with itself. So go down to collisions and enable self collision. Okay, now make sure to save, it's really important. Then come to frame one. Okay, on frame one, you're gonna hit the space bar and you should now see a beautiful simulation like this. How cool is that? Okay, so in this case, I can see I've messed up the spacing a little bit. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to press A to select everything. I'm just going to go S, Z, and flatten it just a little bit and tab back out. Go to frame one. I'm going to hit the space bar. And there we go. That's a lot better. But you can get see the idea here. We've really now created the sort of frizzled skirt. The cool thing is you can always come into edit mode at any point. And you could always go E to extrude and extrude out some more of these edges if you need a little bit more frills to work with, whatever you want to call them, the little overhangy bits, right? And you can go back, go to frame one, hit the space bar, re-simulate, and you get a nice result. So you kind of get the idea. At this point, you can select everything and you can go to your modifiers, neaten them up a bit. You can give them a subdivision surface modifier. And then you can also go search and type in solid, giving it a solidify, and then just giving it a little bit of thickness, like so. And at this point, it's done. There you have it. That's how you create a ruffled skirt in Blender. It's really fun to go to your materials and kind of give it a viewport material. And I like to just go to the viewport display and maybe give it something like a pink, make it sort of rough a little bit. And then you can add another material, go new. And this one, you can also give a viewport um, color, give it a bit of roughness. And then you can just kind of tab in here. And this is sort of fun. You could always just, you know, try out giving a different material to different parts, seeing what it all looks like. But you kind of get the idea here. I don't think I want to spend too much more time on this. But what I will be doing is uploading my original file, which I'll quickly show you over here on the other side of my computer. The exact same thing, nothing I haven't already shown you guys. I haven't withheld anything, but it's the exact same thing. And only thing is here, I've just added in a few lights and a camera. And um, this is the one I'll be adding to my Patreon. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.